beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the Word was light, and the light was the life of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So let us worship God in wonder and in love, trusting in God's light. Please be seated. Welcome to our worship this evening. I would like to share with you a message from Reverend Kay. He would like me to relay his appreciation for all the messages, good wishes, and support and prayers for him and Kathy. Kathy remains in ICU but improves daily by small steps. And he would like everyone to know that they wish a blessed Christmas and a happy and healthy New Year. By the time the star appeared, the weight of darkness and the price of sin had left many of God's children coming and going, but not living, praying and practicing, but not worshiping. So it was just one more cold night on just another midnight clear before the sun would even rise when light overcame the darkness. Angels filled the empty skies trumpets and harps, music and melody, soul-shattering song broke the silence of a thousand generations and the hopelessness of the captives fled without looking back. Cascading down from the unseen heavens, bending near with unfurled wings and God's bright glory, the heavenly hosts announced the words that changed the world. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. So without pause, the shepherds rushed to see. Just a few that night, but they carried all of humanity with them. And there they found a stable less ordinary, and a manger less regal, and a tiny babe wrapped in cloth less royal. But still, he seemed even brighter than the very star that pronounced him. Here on earth, peace, and from God, goodwill toward all people, Glory to God in the highest. Christ, the Messiah, has been born, the Savior of the world. Please join me in our call to worship that is responsive. Like the shepherds, we come to the stable, uncertain of what we have heard and seen. Like the wise ones, we have journeys to make, gifts to offer, and hope in our hearts. Here in the stillness of a winter's night, we gather to share the light of Christ, a light that shines in the nightfall. Our Advent lighting is also responsive. Advent, the season of preparing, is nearly over. Our waiting is nearly finished. Now is a time of fulfillment and celebration. In the darkness of night, we give thanks for light. We light a candle of hope. We light a candle of peace. peace in our hearts and we light a candle of joy. We light a candle of love. And now the hour has come and the season is fulfilled. We light the Christ candle the light of the world, the light of possibility. Amen.
Even as the heavens opened and angels spoke, the first word they sang was peace. Even as confused shepherds came from their hills and flocks, uncertain but hopeful, they greeted each other with peace. In the midst of our preparations and excitement, we take a moment to greet your neighbors beside you with a word of peace. Peace in this place, peace in our homes, peace in this world. Peace be with you and also with you. Let us now take a moment to gather our thoughts in prayer. Let us pray. That's okay. Also responsive, sorry. God of mystery and mercy, you stir in our hearts and bring us joy. Stir in our minds and bring us wisdom. You stir in the world and bring hope for the future. You came as a little child, stirring up praise. So we come to adore you with the angels, to bow with the shepherds, to kneel in wonder with the magi, to ponder your mystery with Joseph, to love and cherish you with Mary. We come with humble hearts full of joy because you came to us first in Jesus whom we hold on our hearts this night. 
Amen. Our carol is O Little Town of Bethlehem, found at Voices United number 64. Please stand as you're able. Please be seated. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Walk in the assurance of God's grace and forgiveness. Be people of light and forgive one another. Let us pray. God of mystery and manger, as we listen to the story of your love born for us in a child of flesh and blood, Help us grasp that love. With the trust of a baby grasping a parent's finger is the trust that all will be well. Amen. We begin our choir cantata hearing the story through scripture, song, and music. The first lesson from Matthew 1, verses 18 to 24. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, 
but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken out of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up to the town of Nazareth in Galilee, to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, where he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, 
who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born.
When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. Born a king on Bethlehem's plain, 
gold I bring to crown him again. King forever, ceasing never, over us all to reign. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born to the king of the Jews? For we observed his star in the east, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen in the east, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering a house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream, not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road.
apparently, I put my pages backwards. <laughs> Often, the very best gifts are given quietly, even anonymously, and yet such gifts have the power to change lives. God's gift in the Christ child arrived in a small town, a humble stable, to a couple no one invited in, and still, that gift changes lives. Our gifts to God this Christmas share in that miracle of new life. Please welcome John Fanny.
and the offering will now be received. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Generous and loving God, your gift to us in Christ Jesus still draws us to the manger and opens our hearts with wonder. Bless our gifts in his name so that they may draw others to your love to find the blessing we have discovered in the one born for us. Amen. Please be seated. And now let us hear these words in the prayers of the people. Let us pray. God of star and stable, you lead us to wonder and to hope. You gather us together to hear your promise of love. As we gather, as we gather, we offer our concerns and our dreams, our hopes and our fears. Like the shepherds who sought the stable, we seek your promise of peace. We pray for your people, broken by violence, those who live with fear and those who live without hope.
Like the wise ones who dedicated their gifts, we remember those in need. We pray for those who are lonely, hungry, or forgotten, for those who are ill in body and in spirit, for those who are confused or afraid. We pray for your joy and love for all your people, especially those we remember now. Holy One, you came as a child, offering renewal of spirit and of living. May our prayers be a new beginning for healing, truth, and trust. May we embody love that is forgiving, compassionate, and gracious. May we send back the angel's song of peace and joy. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, who became the Christ, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We've come to the time in our service where we're going to lower the lights and ask you to light your candles. And we will all st stand and sing together Silent Night, Holy Night. Please remember to leave the candles when you leave the sanctuary tonight. Um, and just before we continue, I'd like to say thank you to all the wonderful musicians. Thank you, John, for being with us tonight and the choir and the bells. This has been a truly wonderful Christmas Eve service. Please stand.
From this house to yours, may you share in the gifts of this season. May love, the promise of generations, attend you. Joy, the gift of life together, fill you. Peace, the desire of neighbor and nations, find you. Hope, the horizon of faith, sustain you. And may a very Merry Christmas be yours. Amen. We'll need the lights, John, please.